You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. You've joined the Dean Team. With you is your brother in Islam, Mazan Abu Zulaf. And I've been joined, alhamdulillah, by a very special guest, Sheikh Zaid al Dakkan. Sheikh, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Again, it's very nice to have you with us, Sheikh. It's a, an absolute pleasure and an honor to be able to have a recording with you um, that the people can benefit from. Sheikh, I wanted to speak to you today about the importance, I guess, to summarize it, the importance of role models. Um, you know, us as humans, and this is in our innate nature, this is how Allah Azza wa has created us, is that we have role models or we have the need to have people to look up to, to imitate, to base the way that we live our lives around. Um, and this is in our nature, you know. Um, and so you'll see, Muslim or non-Muslim, you see them having role models that, um, you know, from sports stars to movie stars to politicians to, you know, rich people to even, you know, their teacher, their best friend, um, someone on TV, you know, and they may not actually even realize it, Sheikh. They, they may, you know, people have a certain hairstyle, for instance, because they're influenced by someone or they have a certain way they talk or the certain way they dress, because there is, even subconsciously, there's, there's, uh, someone has an impact on how, you know, you conduct yourself. And this is what, you know, we, we mean when we talk about, you know, about role models. So us as humans, we do need role models, whether we know it or not, we, do, uh, we are in fact impacted by it. Um, and reality is, you know, there are a lot of role models nowadays that you could use, and the reality is also that um, if you don't choose a good role model, you will end up following a bad role model. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, of all the potential role models that we have nowadays, it is probably, you know, when you get to the point, it is better, actually, if we go and look back in our very rich and very uh, magnificent past in, the, you know, in our Islamic history um, to look for the best of role models. And, of course, none other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who was the perfect example for us to follow. But, you know, obviously, this is, we're talking about a prophet. And, uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we always say, he didn't leave, leave behind, you know, mosques and buildings and roads and universities. Of course, this is all great byproducts of the, um, of the civilization of Islam. But what he left behind were men, were men that he fashioned and he molded and he turned into, he turned into men from people that were just in the desert and no one would look at them twice to people that mm. took down empires. Empire, the greatest empires of the time. So these are the role models that we should be looking, you know, in my humble opinion, that we should be looking towards to help shape how we conduct ourselves as Muslims, subhanAllah. That's right. It's, it's, it's exactly and absolutely. And thank you for choosing such topic because it's a role models for, not as you said, not only for, it's for each nation. And you could see the statues of, uh, in every place you go, the statue of such and such great leader because he's looked at as, a role model, and if you go to all the places in the world, you will see uh, role models being put in statues uh, somewhere, uh, somehow. Or even in their so in their culture, they they are looked upon as <coughs> someone right. to look up to. That's right. But when you look at role models in Islam, we don't have a statue of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's amazing. We don't have a statue for him. If you go to Medina where he was, there's no statue for him, and there's no picture of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there's not not a physical uh, mon, uh, man like size or something yeah. uh, role model that to be so when you have a picture of him. Yeah. Subhanallah, uh, if, if you didn't know and if you didn't see the crowds, <coughs> that's you, right. you wouldn't even know where he's buried if that's you didn't right. see all the crowds and, around. And, and it's amazing to know that he is, Allah the that's only right. prophet that his grave is not. Subhanallah. And this is a challenge. Yeah. No one knows uh, the, uh, the, grave, the, the, the grave of... Uh, all the uh, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah. Jesus, Moses, uh, or I mean, uh, not Jesus, wasn't buried, uh, Moses and uh, Ibrahim, uh, Yusuf, Ibrahim yeah. Yusuf, all of them, we don't know, yeah. we don't know where they are buried exactly, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there, and to make sure that this person was there, 
And nobody would discuss about his existence, that this is his uh, burial place or not. Everybody yeah. it's knows. Not up for, it's not up for discussion. It's, it's not, not, no one will deny or question yeah. the fact. This is, so the role models is, is there, uh, and, and his uh, grave is there. That means once upon a time he was there. It definitely I mean, for those who deny it. But we know as Muslims, we don't, we don't even uh, question it. We, we don't, don't deny even, any of them. Either, yeah, any of we them. don't. And then having the role model, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I mean, most of us would say he's a prophet. Of course he's our role model. But look, let's look at the ones to be safe and also not to talk about politics. The people of nowadays, just go back to the days of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and think of the people around him, for example. I mean, let's say um, those who are what near to him. Yes. When we talk about those who are near to him. Sheikh, you know, the, the, the point on that, and there's a very good point, and I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought it up, is that people sometimes let their weakness maybe come out a little bit and say, mm-hmm. well, you know, he was the Prophet, sallallahu yeah, alayhi wa sallam. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's, you know, the best example, and, and it's, you know, no matter how much I try, I'll never be like him, which That's is right. true. Yeah. And our, our job as Muslims is to try our best to be as much as we can like him, mm-hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But, you know, I think you're making a very good point, okay? And to be near to him, let's, yeah. let's, let's look at those who are around him. When we talk about those who are around him, just like if I ask about Mazen, there should be uh, someone that your mom and your dad or your friends would know that this, you, you, you've got your buddy with you or someone with you all the time. When Mazen is mentioned, X is mentioned. If maybe your cell phone is not working, your mom would call the other person and yes. say, where is he? Uh, this is it's just like there should be someone with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, all the time, uh, most of the time, uh, even in the most critical times, that person would be with Muhammad uh, That person, I mean, most of us, I, mean, I would say all Muslims would know that when we talk about Muhammad Sallallahu we talk about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr's name is, by the way, Abdullah. Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafa, the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was with Muhammad Sallallahu most of the time. Uh, it was reported that uh, one of the Sahaba, Ali, I think, he said, I, I'm, I'm really jealous of two. When Muhammad Sallallahu would mention himself going somewhere, he would mention that I was with Abu Bakr and Umar. Me and Abu Bakr and Umar would be somewhere. Me and Abu Bakr and Umar was somewhere else. So then you have this close person with him. Radiallahu anhu arba. Who's a human being. Yeah. And if we have in our mind that Muhammad is chosen for us to be the prophet, the last prophet of Islam. Then also, the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi are also chosen. Exactly. It's not a haphazard way. Yes. They are also chosen to be the, the companions of, of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi just like the disciples of, of Jesus. I mean, these, the, those people who are chosen to be the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi they have multitask, multi functions, multi talents, whatever you call them. If we talk about each one of them, we're talking about different talent, different characteristic of his or, or her. Uh, and all of them are together, they form the, uh, the companions of Muhammad. If we talk about Abu Bakr, who understands what even Muhammad wants before even talking to us. I mean, we remember this the, the, from the uh, tafsir uh, excuses of, um, of uh, Surah um, Al-Fatih. Al-Fatih. Jaa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on the member and he was reading them. It was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he said, Jaa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was shouting and then. Crying. Yeah, and crying because Muhammad Sallallahu said there was a man that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave him a choice to be in this life and or the or to be in the after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, and he chose to to be with him with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and then Abu Bakr was shouting he was just giving an example yeah. some story the majority if not all did not understand yeah. what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant but it was Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu was with Muhammad. He understands. It's just like we mentioned the story of, of the friends. Uh, the, your friends would know what you, uh, what your own taste of many things. 
even the colors you like yeah. the the, the your you, you, the, the, the tea do you, do you like it with the sugar or not with the sugar what food you order when yeah, you go yeah you just out. like yeah. they know everything about you this man radiyallahu anhu Allah wa ali muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the time so we understand even what how muhammad sallallahu alaihi would think the same thing with our own friends we they they understand how 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 do we how how we, how we think yeah our friends do that Now this man, radiyallahu anhu wa Abu Bakr, understands uh, how would Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam think? How would he react? Reacts, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even the battle of Uhud, when he said, uh, when they, the Sahaba told the Mashura to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we will be fighting outside Medina, then Abu Bakr, after they finished, when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered inside, I said, I think Muhammad wants us to fight inside, not outside. When he went inside, it was tr- it was true. But Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no we decided with the jamaa we have to go out and then in many many stages when they, when they would mention Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would mention Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu and it, it's mentioned in the Quran thaniya thnayni idhuma fil ghar there were two people inside the cave when the hijra hmm. was Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned something about this man he said Uh, if the iman of my ummah would be put in the scale and the iman of Bakr or iman of Bakr will overweight them because when whenever they come to they come to Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu to shake the iman during the times of Mecca not in Medina in Mecca they told him about the Isra and Mi'raj that he left to uh, to, uh, <coughs> to Jerusalem to Jerusalem So they said they have a perfect opportunity yeah, now it's to just like to make Abu Bakr think bad of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's just And then Abu Bakr, he didn't say anything. He said to them, did he say that? Truly he said that? They said, yes, he said. Then, he, then simply he said, he's, he's right. If he said that, this is right. It's right. That's why <clears throat> when we go and also uh, read about the story of Abu Bakr, who was uh, just like uh, naturally to be the successor of Muhammad. Yeah. Although there is a consultation, etc but it was very natural that Abu Bakr radiyallahu an will be the one next to after there, Muhammad it was not a big surprise yeah, it wasn't it was something that was even expected even the change and everything they wouldn't really bother that because Muhammad's awesome. best friend is now to be leading the nation the ummah that is why when we talk about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we talk about Abu Bakr we talk about Umar these are the two most near to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they are not all the sahaba we've got all the different characters and that we would love to know about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um his mercy sallallahu alaihi wasallam even his jokes sallallahu alaihi wasallam there would be someone his shyness yeah his shyness sallallahu alaihi wasallam there would be someone who would be related to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and being one of the companions of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tell us how would muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam be in such and such uh situation place, yeah, yeah. Situation, yeah. So subhanAllah, from all the companions, you know, as you mentioned, Sheikh, each one of them represented a characteristic that um, that was present in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can learn from those around him. For instance, when we talk about shyness, for instance, you know, the uh, the, the shyness of Rasulullah, we think automatically about Uthman radiallahu anhu. Radiallahu anhu. Of course, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is a shy person. Yes. He himself is a shy, is a shy person. But also one of his Sahaba also would take this character to, see, to, 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 to make it to others very visible because Muhammad is visible in that, but also Uthman radiallahu anh. One day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with the Sahaba, with Abu Bakr and Umar, and uh, uh, part of his thigh was uh, exposed. exposed. Then um, some of the Sahaba came and... Uh, Muhammad didn't really They just bother. walked into the and gathering and Rasulullah didn't really change. Yeah, yeah, didn't change. But when Uthman radiallahu an came, Muhammad, what? He just covered his thigh. He covered the part that was exposed. Then he covered it. And then the Sahaba was amazed. Abu Bakr was there, Umar was there. Everybody and more people there. came in. And more people there. But uh, why would he do that? He said, I will be shy from the one who's the manaik are shy from. Subhanallah. That's Uthman radiallahu an. So much. Shy that he would 
Some people say he didn't even see his prophet. But, yeah. I mean, this person who's shy is an exemplification of Muhammad Sallallahu shyness. Okay. And also is, is one part of all the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu who would be giving us a character of Muhammad Sallallahu in, in one part. There would be other parts, of course, and other, other elements in Muhammad Sallallahu life that we would be, for example, telling uh, and talking about, like, for example, the tactics of war. Um, it's not when we talk about the tactics of war. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu Umar was next to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi almost all the time. Yeah. But when it comes to the tactics of war, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu would be in our minds. Not because he supersedes all of them, but he is specialized in that. And as a matter of fact, he was the only one amongst all the leaders and all the uh, the people who, who was leading their armies to be successful. In, 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 in his planning and his tactics of war. Uh, the, the, the well-known battle of Islam, Mu'ta, when he was able to withdraw, there were only 4,000 men against 200,000. Just like an exaggeration. No, that's true. 200,000 against 4,000. 4, 4, and when Khalid Walid, radiallahu an, all the, the leaders of the, of the army were killed, Khalid Walid, radiallahu an, He's a leader by just just like a natural leader. Yeah, he took the the, 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 the initiative and led the army, with Allah Anhu Allah, and he was able to withdraw the army in a very tactical way. In a tactical way, so not the, not retreating. That he was yeah, withdrawing in a tactical way. He was uh, withdrawing in a very tactical way that makes the the other army think that they are still there. Yeah, when they are actually back into Medina because he. Calculated, and he saw that oh, it's it's hard really to beat this army. Same thing with the with the, with Amr ibn Asr radiAllahu anhu arda, very tactical person in the battlefield, and also Khalid Walid in many many uh, fields, uh, in many many battles radiAllahu anhu arda, who uh, would tell the companions the tactics of war during the days of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Khalid bin Walid was against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at only one battle, the Battle of Uhud. And he was partially winning. Then this man converted to Islam, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. He was very intelligent. And he was thinking and thinking that till later he became Muslim radiallahu anhu. So this is part of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. To be uh, a leader in the army, a leader in the tactics of war, also... A uh, very courageous person as Khalid radiallahu anhu arda. Also another example is Ali radiallahu anhu arda. One of the courageous ones, especially in Khaybar. When it was reported that he carried a very heavy door that would be carried by 70 people. I mean, just like Ali radiallahu anhu, one of those who are uh, well known in the battlefield. Is the warrior of our ummah. The warrior of, the, of this ummah, Hamza radiallahu anhu, who was killed in Uhud radiallahu anhu arda, who was also very non courageous. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the people of Quraysh are fearing him. Yes. They didn't want him to be there in the battlefield <laughs> because he's, if, if, if Hamza is there, then they will be losing. Big problems. Uh, yeah. It's a big problem for them. Um, Salman Faris's tactics during the battle of, of the danger of the Khandaq when. Uh, when uh, when he, radiallahu anhu arda, told Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how would they do in Persia if they have an army approaching them and then their numbers are are less than the army? What would they do of having a very huge trench trench uh, between them and the and the and the and the, uh, enemy. And the enemy? Uh, this is the, the, the those companions of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are also examples for us that uh, Muhammad's. Multi characteristics companions around him. So Allah said that. One example is also someone who would be also joyful and uh, always playful, be and, playful joking and, and joking with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not everyone would be. This is the prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. So no, not would be anyone would be approaching and joking with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there would be someone of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's companions to to tell jokes and to be with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And sometimes to ask Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the questions that others would not ask. Yeah. And be courageous to do that. Dhulia Dayyam radiallahu anhu arda, when they prayed uh, Asr, they, Muhammad prayed only two rakahs. Because he's a prophet. 
and the Sahaba are shy to ask Muhammad Sallallahu Asr is four, but he prayed too. So they stayed for a while. Someone should talk. Bakr was there, Umar was there, maturity was there, but they couldn't ask. This is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yeah. the Prophet of Allah means revelation. Yes. So to question revelation is not it's not, it's not an option, yeah. It's not an option. This man asked Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, uh, Prophet of Allah, uh, is the, 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 uh, the prayer is shortened or you forgot? You can't say to Muhammad, forgot. <laughs> he said, uh, what? He said, we prayed only two. Then the other Sahaba said, yes, Rasulullah, we prayed only two. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then he said, uh, yeah, no, I didn't forget. and uh, It's not short. It's not been shortened. Yeah. yeah. He said, no, no, we prayed only two. And then he looked at them and said, everybody's saying, we prayed too. And this is, by the way, to tell others that Muhammad is a human being. Subhanallah. But a perfect human being, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He could forget. So when we forget, there's an example for us. Even forgetfulness. There's an example that Muhammad did. And nowadays, if, if we, we, we forget in our prayers of not completing the four and maybe praying one or two, or, and then we could be uh, having this an example for us in fiqh, that if you forgot the two, you just do the other two. If you forgot one and then... There's a very complete se- section about how how could we uh, do our prayers if we forget something. And this could never have happened if Rasulullah if the, didn't give us the example. That's right. If, and it could not, never happen if, if, if that man didn't ask Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because, I mean, those who joke, usually they are, um, they would ask, uh, they would be blunt to ask yes. so many questions that others wouldn't, would be shy to ask. We didn't think that uh, if I say to you that Uthman is asked the question, you say, no, it's impossible. Uthman wouldn't ask Muhammad because no. he's the shy person. Yes. Uthman is known for also and when, when we talk about spending. Uthman, radiallahu anh, most people would know that Uthman is paid a lot for Muhammad وسلم, and the armies, etc. But the most who paid a lot is Abu Bakr. Radiallahu anh. Allah, Allah. Umar, Muhammad وسلم, on the member, he said, they would, there wouldn't be any one of you who paid and we didn't pay. We didn't give them pay. We, we didn't pay them back. So we, we, we've repaid all of you? Repaid all of you. For the favors that you've done. And except, he said, Abu Bakr. Except Abu Bakr, subhanAllah. Only Abu Bakr. That, because Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa arda, we didn't, uh, Muhammad and Abu Bakr, Muhammad didn't, I mean, I would say from my own point, that Muhammad would think Abu Bakr is the same as Muhammad. Yes. And they are only one. That's why when they're buried, they're buried next to each other. Allah Akbar. They're buried next to each other to tell us also the, the, the relationship between them and then Umar radiallahu anh later joined them. Uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, one day in, 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 in giving, Umar radiallahu anh said, I will beat Abu Bakr this time. Uh, so Muhammad asked him for donations and then uh, the man came and uh, Umar radiallahu anh to give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, and he brought almost a quarter of his wealth. Almost fourth of his wealth wealth came, uh, then uh, uh, he said, no, a quarter is, is that much. Not too much. I will put half of my wealth, which is a lot. If you have uh, uh, one million and then you pay 500,000, that's a lot. Mm. So he took half of his wealth to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And then he came and said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, it's a lot of money. He said, what have you left for your own family? He said, I left half of to my family. That's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, good, Sakallah khair, etc. And then Abu Bakr came. Abu Bakr brought a lot of things. Then Allah, Allah's messenger asked him, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, he said, what have you left for your own family? He said, nothing. I left for them Allah and his, mess- and his messenger. And then at that point of time, Umar said, I know that I will not beat Abu Bakr. <laughs> this is in spending. He gave up. He gave up. I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult if you are competing with someone who is almost the soulmate of Muhammad. <laughs> when we talk about the soulmate, we talk about Abu Bakr. Yes, yes. Everything, that's why Muhammad, <laughs> when he died, he, he didn't leave that money. He didn't leave money for, for his own uh, family. He didn't. He, as a matter of fact, he died while his own shield was was with the uh, with, with the Jew because uh, he lent some money from him. Yeah. This is 
they borrowed some money from him. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 there are so many characteristics of Muhammad and the companions that we could be quoting. Like when we talk about ilm, each of the Sahaba has got his own character. Also ilm, we talk about the female, females, the first one to come to our mind is Aisha, who was so young and vibrant. She, when Muhammad Sallallahu died, she was only 18. She was full of ilm till an, a degree that Muhammad Sallallahu said, it, it's narrated, that Muhammad Sallallahu said, Khudu deenikum and dirkum al Take religion from this lady. Aisha, so young, a scholar, so young, so young, so intelligent, and is a wife of Muhammad Sallallahu and she narrated to us so many things about Muhammad Sallallahu Things that no one else could ever narrate. Because she was so young, so, so, so the brain would be uh, absorbing. absorbing many things. And she was also to stay till later stages. And this is something extraordinary that, that he, it, she was young when Muhammad Sallallahu married her. But also she stayed till she was almost in her 57. That means almost 30 Plus years after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi or 40 years after Almost Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 40 years after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spending and telling about the knowledge of Allah. For Allah's the next generation. For, for generations to come. Subhanallah. She was known as to be the, the teacher and people will come of the Sahaba and others would come and sit and, 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 and listen to her. Listen to Allah Alaihi Wasallam. And they, if they have any problem, they would come and ask her. Subhanallah. Allah Alaihi it's an example so for wisdom, yeah, it's the wisdom. And also when we talk about, for example, the judges in Islam, we talk about Umar and we talk about Ali, عن, who's got so much knowledge also. عن, who uh, we talk about even the youngsters amongst them, Ibn Umar, عن, who was 10 years at the days of Muhammad, who was so young. عن, and he observed knowledge known as one, one of the, well, the seven abadi, yeah. He, he's got so much knowledge. We've got so many examples of Muhammad uh, in their in their uh, in, in their own perspective or their own character. As a matter of fact, when you talk about a role model, we are taking Muhammad وسلم, as the epitome and the top of it. Okay, and then you have it's like a tree, and then you have branches of tree of the tree. The branches of the tree are the companions of Muhammad وسلم, those who are following him to the day of judgment. So if you choose any of those companions by himself, he's a role model. Yes. And if you gather all of them, they are they, they are a living example of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a complete package of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, role models. That's why if we are uh, to follow and to know more about the lives of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then more about the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi companions, wives, children. We are actually taking the role models uh, who are the best, the perfect ones, not the role models of, of, of nowadays. Of course, later in the, in the Islamic history, there are so many other role models of the ulama. You have the four uh, well-known ulama in Islam, and then you have other scholars who are coming after them. Yes, but let's take the best. Let's take the examples that they took from. They, they took from. That's right. And we have their stories fully. We have them everywhere uh, in the, 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 the history books. And also we have special books for them. Uh, I remember I, I gave some talks about the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also the either female and male, about 40 plus minus, talks about them. And you have them, I think, UMA uh, website. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, it's... When we talk about those companions, we're actually talking about a complete package, as you said, of Islam and role models. That if we want to follow, we should be following those role models. And if we want to avoid uh, wrongdoings, we should be also following their, their, their role models. Because if you, are, if you are reading a lot and a lot and a lot about those role models, at the end of the day, you'll be actually following them and doing what they do. It's very important brothers and sisters to not only think of them as role models just think of it but go dig deep in their lives and stories and see what would be resembling you what would be making you as a as a better person as also 
an excellent example for your own family, children, parents, whatever you want to do, or whatever you, you think of uh, uh, as role models for you and for, for others. That's why when we look at our community here, there are some role models. They're not perfect role models, but they are really good role models. And this is from the goodness of this nation, the, the, uh, the, the Muslim woman, that all the time you will have role models for it. But we have to think that they are not perfect role models. As we mentioned in the beginning, that if you want to follow a sunnah, you follow the sunnah of those who passed away. Yes. Not the sunnah of those who are still alive. Those because who were tested by, the, the, by death. Still tested. Still. Yes. Yeah. That's why uh, following the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions and the well-known scholars of Islam is one of the excellent things as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that uh, there is a very good example for you on Rasulullah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala SallAllahu Sheikh you know the, when we get to uh, and we mention this a lot when we speak about the Sahaba themselves as well but obviously mostly Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now when we talk about role models Sheikh if you take anyone nowadays, you know, be it politician or movie star or sports star, they they could have you know the best uh, reputation right now. Mm-hmm. You know, this person could do nothing wrong. We've seen it ourselves. We've seen it with sports stars. That's right. You know, this person is the the golden boy of this particular sport. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, and everyone just praises him and and uses him as a role model for others that want to follow in his footsteps. That's right. And uh, but then you get closer to this person or more of this person gets exposed and you start to see cracks. Mm. Underneath this shiny surface, you start to see cracks. That's right. And you start to realize you know, there's, uh, there are actually a few things which are questionable, if not actually bad, about this person. Mm. And as humans, we know that we're not perfect. And That's right. We do have right. things, you know, and, and this is not to put anyone else down, but we do uh, have, uh, everyone has shortcomings. But the, the point I'm trying to make is that People have, you know, role models that have these shortcomings. That's right. But when you read about the Sahaba, and especially Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the more you scratch beneath that shiny surface, and it's extra shiny, mm. the more you scratch, the more you see shine, you know, That's more right. light shining. That's right. And the, and the more you learn about them, the more you love them. That's right. Whereas if other role models or other Absolutely. people that potential, the more you learn about them, you start to distance or be cautious because you start to see things which would alarm you or worry you. That's right. With out with the companions with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the more you learn about them, the more you love them. The more you That's love right. them, the more you want to imitate them. And as you said, you know, imitating the Sahaba and being like a Sahaba, if, you know, every single one of us has a characteristic that is closer to more than one Sahab, more to one Sahabi than another. That's right. But combining all these characteristics and traits, we we get you know to this to the great character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And of course, the more we learn about him. We uh, we have no choice but to love him more because That's of right. how great he is and That's what a great role model he is. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Sheikh, again, we could go on this forever, and it's a uh, very it's an yeah, honor right. to be able to see and talk yeah, to right. you about the greatest of role models. Subhanallah. Allah <laughs> and thank you so much. Also, likewise, I mean, uh, I'm really very happy to always talk about such things that uh, are so much to our uh, daily life and our ourselves and our hearts. Especially the 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 life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and his companions. Sheikh, I wanted to just ask you one more question. Mm. Um, and this, I'm I'm a father of three, Alhamdulillah. Mm. And uh, you know, I'm very conscious. You know, the more I, I I observe my kids, I see them. You know, this need of a role model is mm. extremely important. That's right. And and it, I came to the realization one day that my son, maybe he was nine or eight at the time, didn't even actually know the names of the foot of the. Rashid and the four, the it's, main four companions, and that was really upsetting to me because he knew football stars and he knew, <coughs> you know, some music stars or you know whatever they see and whatever the kids talk about in school. But I made it a point, even if they only know the four names of those four Sahaba of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, then I would want them to at least know their names, That's to right. at least know some of the names of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because. You know, we can't love people if we don't if know, we don't know about them. That's, them. Right. That's right. That's right. So, 
and and I don't know, you, I know you've travelled, Sheikh. I know you've you know you've you've um, you know you've got friends all over the you know alhamdulillah all over the world. And is this something you notice as well with the kids and well, the generations? It is true. I mean, most of, I would say. Some of them, I would say, wouldn't even know about the Sahaba's names, or let alone the, the, the their stories. That's why to to have them love Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and knowing their names and knowing their stories is is, is an essential part of our own daily life. Uh, let them think of of the positiveness that they that they have, but also uh, knowing about the wives of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the the children. The Tun, the the Ashram Bashirin, and and many others that make them close to them, and without knowing them, we would be losing a lot. Subhanallah. We would be actually uh, away from most of the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we don't know that those who convey to us the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, when when people don't know much about Abu Hurairah radiAllahu Anhu. Many a hadith has been narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Same thing if they don't know about uh, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu arda, they don't know about Khalid bin Wali, they don't know about Umar, they don't know about Sanman Farisi. If they don't know about them, they just like names have no yeah. meanings for them. But knowing them, uh, the names, knowing their characters, knowing their history is actually a way to awaken the faith and also to make them good people. Yes. To make them better. Muslims in their religion also to make them good people and following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's footsteps. Okay. It's a very good point, Shaykh, okay. because I know, you know, everyone everyone is different. You know, that's, and that's right. That's a fact. You're right. You're different. Right. And, you know, there could be stories of a particular companion that it might not affect the person. That's because, right. okay, yes, it's a nice story and it's nice to know, but that's it's right. actually, uh, because I don't understand the way this person thinks, it mm. probably doesn't have the same impact. That's but, right. You know, when you learn about these companions, you will come across one or more companions that actually fit your characteristics, right. your, your personality. Exactly. Exactly. And then knowing their story and how Islam changed them will give you an understanding of That's how right. exactly. Islam can impact your life. Exactly, life. exactly. It's just like maybe five stories will be told to us or we read about five of the companions. One would be so much of interest to you and maybe not of interest to me, yeah. but would be, uh, the, the, the other one would be interest to me, but not of an interest to you. It is just like Allah's, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in all of us the, uh, the love towards something. Yes. One of the companions would fill that. Because, or if we read about Muhammad Sallam's character, character, it will be somewhere there yes, in Muhammad Sallam's character. But also, it's also in one of the companions of Muhammad Sallam. Those who would love us, as we said, ilim, planning, uh, closeness, um, love towards uh, poetry, uh, Hassan bin Thabit, love towards being very playful and jokeful, uh, like the Dayn and, and, and many yeah. others of yeah. Muhammad yeah. Sallam's yeah. companions. They should be someone to trigger your, to trigger your mind to be uh, to follow. That's why it is very important, as he said, to educate our children and to tell them every now and then about the Sahaba. Who's the strongest one? Who's the closest one? Who's who is the most dear to one? Who is the oldest of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's companions? Who's the youngest and who's the etc. Making them trigger their minds yeah. to 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 answer and to to seek knowledge uh, in those uh, companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because without a role model. We can't really progress in, in many fields. If and you don't have a role model, especially of nowadays, yep. spiritual role model, as well as a, a, a physical role model around us to, to look for, maybe we will not be able to progress as the, our, our forefathers and, and the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did before. Subhanallah. Yeah. Well, <coughs> it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, it's exactly it's always a pleasure and an honor to, be, uh, to spend some time with you. Um, we thank you very much for your time, and uh, inshallah, we get to have you back uh, sooner rather than later, Shaykh. Inshallah. Thank you very much, and thank you to the listeners, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us all from what we said. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. And that's it for another episode of the Dean Team. Stay tuned uh, and visit our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiraka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.